Now, the whole cardiovascular system is set up to make sure that your tissues are perfused. What does that mean? That blood is given to the tissues. There are perfusion technologists that basically their job is to hang blood, to, to infuse or transfuse, I should say, blood. So everything, the way the cardiovascular system is regulated is based on this. This is the main goal, perfuse the tissues, get blood to the tissues that need blood. So there are two, basically, two basic things that your body alters, that two basic easy buttons, <laughs> the two control knobs, if you will. They can control cardiac output, which is how much blood the, pump, the heart is pumping, and then blood pressure. All of this is regulated by, of course, the nervous system and the endocrine system. <laughs> cardiac output <laughs> is the amount of blood pumped by one ventricle. And normally we think about the left ventricle. But the same thing is going on in the right ventricle. It kind of gets left out in one minute. So if you measure the amount of blood coming out of the left ventricle in a minute, that's your cardiac output. Now, a little math again, but no, no fractions this time. <laughs> cardiac output equals the heart rate, which would make sense, times stroke volume. So remember stroke volume is the amount of blood that leaves the ventricle every time it contracts. If we take the ventricle, remember that the blood, uh, when the ventricle is fully relaxed, that amount of blood is called the end diastolic volume, right? E, V, V, end diastolic, fully relaxed. Resting heart rhythm, about 130 mils. Stroke volume is the amount that leaves every time the ventricle contracts. Ah, that's usually about 70 mils. And then the amount that's left is about 60. It's about 60, and that's the end systolic volume. The amount of blood left in the ventricle once it contracts. On average, Stroke volume is about 70 mils per contraction of the ventricle. Heartbeat's about 75 beats per minute. You multiply those two things together and you get 5.2 um, liters, 5,250 milliliters, or 5.25 liters, right?
stuff slows down the capillaries and it picks back up again. That's exactly right. Now, during sexual intercourse. Woo! <laughs> 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 um, 130 times 150 is, I think, um, 119, 500, something. Yeah. Basically, every 15 seconds. That's crazy. The entire volume of your blood is going through your body. That's why you can't have sex for hours and hours. One of the reasons that. <laughs> <laughs> your heart can't take it. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. Control cardiac output, you can alter heart rate and you can alter stroke volume. And this is the question you were getting to. Stroke volume does increase as well as heart rate. And that's what, um, of course, if stroke volume increases, uh, the EDV is probably also increasing as well. Now, the two things that control heart rate are your autonomic nervous system, fight or flight, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and the hormones. To control stroke volume, you alter the end diastolic volume, how much blood you start out with, and then in systolic volume, how much blood is left. So if this is bigger and this is smaller, that's bigger. All right, of course, in the autonomic nervous system, you have parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions. The sympathetic division tends to speed the heart up, the fight or flight response. Parasympathetic tends to slow it down. And then you have three hormones that um, have direct influence on the heart. Um, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Remember that epinephrine is the same thing as adrenaline. Norepinephrine is the same thing as noradrenaline. And then our good old thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones affect pretty much every cell in the body, but they do have also an effect on the heart muscle. Okay, cardiac plexus. This is one of those um, autonomic plexuses that we probably talk very briefly about, if at all, last semester. Those nerves in that plexus, is, those nerves are controlled by the cardiovascular centers back in the medulla oblongata. So you get that little area, that little nucleus that we call the cardiovascular center in the medulla oblongata. It's going to be sending axons down to and then also through that cardiac plexus. Both parasympathetic and sympathetic information, uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic axons are going to be coming. In the cardiovascular center itself, you have two areas. You have sympathetic nerves, or, or signals that go to sympathetic nerves, and, symbol, and signals that go to parasympathetic nerves. What I'm trying to say is that basically you have the cardioaccelerator center that speaks the heart up, the cardiac inhibitory center that slows the heart down. So in this area of the medulla oblongata, you basically got an accelerator for the heart and a brake for the heart. So depending on what signals are going into the medulla oblongata, it determines all, it determines whether it needs to speed the heart up or slow the heart down. So the signals from the cardioaccelerator center travel through axons <laughs> through the cardiac accelerator nerve. If I were to diagram that on the board, I'd have medulla oblongata here. Have a neuron that comes down on another neuron and another neuron. This would be this should be my sympathetic ganglion. Ha, <laughs> ha,
So the sympathetic autonomic nervous system innervates most of the cells in the heart, both the atria and the ventricles. So, because it innervates the SA and AB nodes, it can make those depolarize faster, which is going to speed up your heart rate. Remember, these cells will depolarize on their own. So, without any, if you didn't have this, if this signal was broken, if that, if that uh, neuron was not there, or that axon was not there, the heart's still going to beat. You couldn't speed it up by the nervous system, but it'll still beat. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, it sets it's the, the, the SA node sets the rate, resting heart rate. But when it gets signals from these neurons, or these yeah, these neurons, then it speeds up. And so it makes it it doesn't only speed up the pacemaker or whatever it's called, but first the uh, sino so, SA node, right. SA node. It also speeds up the the, 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 the next node. It can, yep. Because remember, if the SA node cells die, the AP node is still there. And so these signals, the SA, the signals would go to the SA node, it would work. So it would speed up the AP node. So that second strand goes to the AP node. Oh, I, yeah. Okay. But actually, that was the. Yeah, you could have one. You could have one of the SA node. You could have. SA node. Basically, two cells of the of both ventricles. Well, remember the SA node. The reason that it's the boss, the reason that it's the cardiac um, pacemaker, heart pacemaker, is because it, those cells in the SA node depolarize more quickly than any of the rest of them. And so, when they depolarize, the rest of them pay attention to that. One. And so, basically, they all listen to the SA node. And so, this is a signal that's telling the SA node speed up. And then, of course, the whole heart speeds up. If the cells of the SA node die, then everybody listens to the AB node. But they don't work. But they don't. They don't work. They don't depolarize as quickly as the cells of the SA node. Okay. But the the sympathetic autonomic nervous system can still speed the heart up by stimulating the AB node. Does that make sense? All right, now, the, the neurotransmitter that's released is norepinephrine. And the reason this speeds, the reason that norepinephrine speeds the heart up, the reason that it causes, deep, causes the cells to depolarize faster is because when norepinephrine binds to these cells, sodium and calcium channels open. More sodium runs in, more calcium runs in, and you get that whole depolarization, plateau, repolarization. Remember, you've got sodium running in here, you got calcium running in here, right? Okay. So you're you're speeding up the entrance of these ions, and so the heart beats faster. A secondary effect of this, because you've got more calcium going in, not only does the heart beat faster, but it also increases the strength of contraction. Each cardiac muscle cell generates more force, and that's why I drew this diagram with axons coming into the atria as well as the ventricles. So the sympathetic autonomic nervous system speeds the heart up, increases heart rate, and increases force of contraction. So sympathetic autonomic nervous system increases heart rate and stroke volume. Every time the ventricle contracts harder, more blood is pumped out. And it's, it's basically because Pretty much all of the heart is innervated by the sympathetic autonomic nervous system. All right, parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. Remember that 70% or so of the parasympathetic output is carried by the vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10? The parasympathetic nervous system does not innervate the ventricles very much. Parasympathetic AMS, so you've got that same deal. You've got lots of stuff here. I'll actually go to the other side, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. But not very much here. 
the main function of the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system is to decrease heart rate. It doesn't have a very big impact on contractility, on the force of contraction, because that's not where those neurons are going. Now, the uh, neurotransmitter that's released from the parasympathetic is acetylcholine. And remember, that has the opposite effect on the heart. Acetylcholine opens potassium channels. Potassium ions leave the heart, making, it, making those cells hyperpolarized, making it more difficult to get them depolarized. They're going the wrong direction. And that's why heart rate slows down. Because acetylcholine doesn't have any effect on calcium channels, and because the part of the heart that's innervated is up here, that's why it has very little um, influence on contractility. Only if you get a really strong parasympathetic signal, a whole bunch of signals from the parasympathetic nervous system, would the heart beat more weak. Under normal conditions, parasympathetic nervous system doesn't have much influence on contractility because of the effect of the neurotransmitter and where those neurons are, how they integrate the heart. So it would be slower, but the contractions Normal, correct. Kind of baseline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would take a smaller amount of those hormones to, to produce the same result because they're more receptive. 